The Democratic establishment is pushing Hillary Clinton as the nominee of choice for the party in 2016. And if they succeed, it could be even more corporatist Wall Street running America. Joining me to talk about this is Farron Cousins, executive editor of the Trial Lawyer magazine. Farron, it seems like the Democrats are almost hopeless in coming up with new ideas about maybe where the party should head. Uh, we see them, you know, Hillary's there, and it's like it, it, she's been around for so long. You know, she's Bill Clinton's wife. She's the, the foregone conclusion that she's the only one that can win. Uh, that That is really, really poor thinking on the part of the Democrats. It, it's almost it, it's almost Republican-like, isn't it? It is. It, it, it's so Republican-like because it's not forward-thinking. It's backwards-thinking. Hillary Clinton has been in the national spotlight for 22 years at least at this point. And, you know, if you, if you look back at during her, her time as the First Lady, her time in the Senate, her first campaign for president, you'll see that, you know, she was just as much a Wall Street Democrat as Obama has been. Her major campaign donors have always come from Wall Street. They're one of the biggest sources of, of income for her campaigns ever. She's no different than Obama. She's no different than, you know, somebody like Mary Landrau. She has no position on the environment. She is all for letting Wall Street run amok. And well, that is what the party it, wants to go to. I, I call it the Obama bot mentality. That is where Democrats say, well, he's a Democrat, she's a Democrat, and therefore uh, this is our only chance. There's no, there's no critique. There's no honesty about really what the, what the Democratic Party has become. We know that she's simply going to be an extension of Bill Clinton with NAFTA and CAFTA, and now it's going to be TPP. We know that she, she owes Wall Street everything. We know what the money, you know, the money is very clear. We see the history of the money coming directly from Wall Street starting back to the Clinton days. So isn't this just an extension of Bill Clinton, an extension of Obama, where we're saying hope and change, but at the same time, we're seeing the same old thing? Unfortunately, right now in the modern Democratic Party, hope and change do not exist among the leadership. You know, when, first you have to look at the Republican Party. The Republican Party has become so extreme that Wall Street donors can't look at that and say, yeah, we'll put money behind it. So Democrats like Barack Obama, like Hillary Clinton, they move more to the center, closer to the right than the left. It and is so closer they to the right get, than the center. And yeah. so they get that Wall Street money because Wall Street, they have to give money to somebody, the big banks, the oil companies, everybody, but they can't go to the right crazy. So now that quest for that campaign money is pushing the Democratic Party further to the center and then further to the right. We're getting away from any kind of notion of, of this, you know, Jim Hightower populism, this Bernie Sanders, uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren populism, and we're moving more towards corporatism because they want the money, because they think that's the only thing they can get that will make them win. Well, one big problem is the only thing the Democrats seem to focus on is the White House. I mean, right. if you think about it, they focus on the Senate, they focus on the White House, but we're really, we're getting killed in the states. You have the Democrats. Nobody listened, for example, to Howard Dean when he said, you know, we need a 50-state strategy. We've got to build from the ground up in the state. While that was going on, you had the big money, the people who make so much money, the advisors, the PR people that make so much money in the PR business of presidential campaigns and Senate campaigns. They have Democrats looking at nothing but that. And it was like, if, if Obama comes into power, all's going to be well. Well, while that was going on, of course, we saw that everything Obama did was destroyed. It, it, if it wasn't destroyed in Congress, it was certainly destroyed in the state. It is that narrow, naive thinking that's killing the Democratic Party. They simply say, all is riding on the same old thing. All is riding on winning the White House, and that's all the hell we care about. And you know what? If Hillary will win, everything's going to be okay because the alternative so bad is so bad. Aren't you a little bit tired of hearing that, that we can't do any better? I am. It's like the Democratic base seems to forget that we have a separation of powers. You know, we, we do have the presidency, but we also have the Senate and the House of Representatives. We have the courts, but then come down to the state level, come down to the city and the city level. Go, you know, 
support a Democrat for dog catcher, school board, things like that, work the way up from the bottom because you can enact more change on a local level, on a smaller scale, than you can from the White House. And I think that's the thing that everybody overlooks. You know, they, well, they the Republicans did, Republicans didn't overlook it. Oh, Republicans absolutely not. had a they took better, matter of fact, they took Howard Dean's 50 state strategy and they stole it and they used it and the same boneheaded Democratic leadership that is the same old gang. It's the same gang. If you go back and you look at Democratic leadership all the way back to Bill Clinton, it's the same Wall Street crowd, it's the same PR firms, it's the, exactly the same people just moving around within that Democratic hierarchy. And so all of a sudden, now we're here thinking, well, my God, the only way we can win is to have Hillary Clinton uh, run, and we have to ignore people like, uh, like Elizabeth Warren. We have to ignore people like Sheldon Whitehouse. We have to ignore people that probably could move the Democratic Party in the place it needs to be instead of just a recap, a retread of old Republican politics. That's what the Democrats have become. I'm an independent, so it's easier for me to say that. Well, 2016 could be a phenomenal year for the Democratic Party because any year when you don't have an incumbent running is a time to change your message. That's when you can have the most success. You can take your party in a new direction. You're not tethered to any one person. Now, we can move forward and go with Hillary Clinton and stay on this, you know, Barack Obama, uh, 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 Bill Clinton corporatist path, or we can pick a, a new person. It doesn't even have to be Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders. It could be somebody that we, we've never really even heard. We might not know their name today, but it could be a young, new person energized figure that isn't like Obama. They're not all talk. They're out there being like Elizabeth Warren and, and, and going after the things that are screwing over Americans, like the big banks and the oil companies and, and all sorts of pharmaceutical industry. We could go yeah. on forever. Uh, you know, okay, but so, so here we are. Now, aren't we able to say, let's look at what this old thinking did for us, okay? We still have corporate America housing three trillion dollars in offshore banks we still are giving corporate america 62 billion dollars every year in subsidies we still have a disparity a poverty disparity in this country that ha we haven't seen since the great depression we still have decisions that affect our national security being affected uh, being determined by the corporate end of the the new military industrial complex we have all of these things right in front of us but we say my god we can't do any better so let's go with hillary now i don't know if you if you followed this story but but wall street is so concerned that there might be a real challenger rise up that they're pumping in record amounts of money into Hillary Clinton's race and they're ignoring the 20 that well they're, they're ignoring 2014 cycle right they're putting all the money into the 20 into the Hillary into the Hillary race ignoring all the, the the reps and the senators who are running the governors who are running no money really to speak of going in those races well and and, and, and speaking of money what's really pathetic right now is how Hillary Clinton is paying so so much to the the military contractors when she came out a couple weeks ago and compared uh, uh, Vladimir Putin's actions oh, in, in, in Ukraine to Hitler she's also come out and said that Obama is not being tough enough on Iran and that she does not trust Iran as far as any nuclear agreement goes I mean these are the same things we heard from John McCain back in 2008 that scared the hell out of us and she is out there saying these and she is a very real contender with a real shot at actually winning the White House and so she's out there they're saying these extremist, you know, militaristic uh, uh, views, and what that's going to do is all those military contractors are going to start pumping money into her as well. And it, well, it's we, saw, be the we, same saw, thing. we saw it already. They wanted a new face, and they went with Obama because Obama gave a better speech. Yep. You know, basically that was it. Hope and change, and we can, and all that crazy nonsense that's proven to be ridiculous talk. So he's out there separating. If you remember, he separated himself from Hillary Clinton on international affairs. That's where he said, I'm different. Right. He separated himself from Hillary Clinton on Wall Street. And then, we, of course, he comes into office, and that's all a lie. Right. Well, and, you know, I, I don't want to go as far as to say that we were duped by Barack Obama, but we really didn't know enough about him. We really didn't. He had no record. He hadn't taken a strong stand on the environment. He hadn't taken a strong stand on any of the important issues of the day. 
And so when he got into office, we that's when we got to see who he really was, and that's when the problems arose. He and do we? Know, have, but we don't have that problem with Hillary because Hillary's been out there a long time. But I don't know if we can really believe when she starts trying to say I might be progressive. Listen to the word "might" very carefully. Right. She she has no record again on any of these issues except being to the right. She's on the right on military issues. She's on the right on finance reform. She's on the right on campaign finance reform. And so she is not a Democrat at all. I mean, there's no way to look at her and say, oh, yeah, you're progressive on this issue, because she's not. The only reason progressives are rallying behind her or, or rallying behind whoever the party wants to throw up is because the Democratic Party is better on social issues. But you cannot build a campaign, you cannot build a party based solely on, on social, social issues. issues. Farron Cousins, thank you for joining me. Thank you.